much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where fewer points mean the better your chance of winning. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so, welcome back, Liz and Katie. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances, of course, to reach the final, and this is your last chance. Remind us how you did. Well, Alexander, we went out in the first round. Mm. Serious bad times. <laughs> No, I'm trying to think what it was. It was something that happened after. Oh, Band Aid. That's Band -Aid, what it was. Band Aid, yeah. We're, We're too born. young. Yes, We're too young. young. What can yeah. we do? What would you like to come up this first round? Make sure you yes. last a little bit longer. Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'd be <laughs> right in there. <laughs> Pointless answers. Excellent. <laughs> well, fingers crossed, eh? Right, and welcome to Gavin and Joe. Uh, how do you two know each other and where are you from? Hi, Alexander. Well, I'm from Bristol and Gavin's from Southampton and we are. Brother, brother and sister. <laughs> yeah, brother, uh, hang on. Yeah, work this <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother and sister. Very, very good indeed. Uh, what do you do, Joe? Well, I'm currently a student studying drama, and I work part time in a restaurant. Excellent, Gavin. How about you? Uh, I'm a data analyst. Data analyst. Yeah. Well, not the very most exciting of jobs, but. <laughs> It could be. It, it could be, you see. It could be. Well, very best of luck this afternoon. And welcome to Sue and Chris. Uh, how do you two know each other? Hi, Alexander. Sue and I both come from County Durham and now moved into the neighbourhood where Sue lived. We've been friends for 28 years. 28 years? Yes. Firm friends all that time? Have you ever had dips, rows? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Who's the peacemaker? Sue. I'm the quiet one. The quiet... <laughs> Does that mean you're, you're quite, quite gobby then, Chris? You... No. <laughs> um, I can be, unfortunately. I don't believe it for a yes, minute. I can be. Well, as long as you're gobby with the right things this afternoon, <laughs> maybe we'll see you through to the final. And welcome back to James and Sam. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you did. Well, we got to the head's head, um, but we failed on a question about OPEC, and I overruled Sam's correct answer with an incorrect answer. So, uh, hoping to do better this time. What can you do? And by way of penance, you went and had your hair cut. Yes. <laughs> I, I can't help noticing <laughs> you had yet. What was wrong with it before, for heaven's sake? It was too scruffy. I didn't want my mum to moan at me for being scruffy on television. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, very best of luck this afternoon. We'll find out more about you all throughout the show. Finally, let me introduce the man who is the turbocharged search engine of obscurity. Not my words. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> Do you like that? That's, a, that's just a quote. That that's is just some a quote. intro. Turbocharged you are. Who's that a quote from? Turbocharged... Um, autocue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think autocue is a little thin for me. We've got a great little show lined up today. I think James and Sam were a very, very good uh, team last time. And unless James has lost his Sansom-like strength <laughs> by having his hair cut, I suspect they may do well again. I still can't believe that Liz is a police officer. Genuinely can't. I believe that I believe Gavin is a data analyst. I believe <laughs> that that I believe. But Liz is a police officer. Okay, well thank you very much, Richard. Now we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this of course is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. The fewer people who got the answer, the fewer points awarded, and the better the chance of winning. To stay in the game with a chance to win the jackpot, all our players need to do is score as low as they possibly can. What everyone's looking to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time this happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, unbelievably, last time, somebody actually won the jackpot. So the jackpot starts today back at £1,000. <laughs> right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will, of course, be eliminated. And you must be very careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Soap operas. Oh, heavy sigh from <laughs> Joe. <sighs> <sighs> soap operas. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Right, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many original EastEnders characters as they could. Original EastEnders characters, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any character who appeared in the very first episode of EastEnders, February 1985, the original cast of EastEnders from that very first episode. Right, Liz and Katie. 
You all drew lots before the show. Today, you get to go first. Is this a better category for you than Band-Aid? This is slightly better. I was one this time. There you so are. Obviously, my memory's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I, well, I'm, I'm fairly sure that this person was in it. I'm struggling to think of somebody more obscure than this, so I'm pretty sure that it begins with them finding a body, and I think it was Arthur Fowler. Arthur Fowler, you are saying. OK, let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. You're hoping to score as few points as possible, of course. Arthur Fowler. It is correct. <laughs> 30, not a bad answer. <laughs> see, I guess, my reckoning is this is going to be quite a high-scoring round anyway. So 30 is probably not a bad score. Richard, 30. Yeah, Arthur Fowler, very well done. He went to prison twice, had a mental breakdown in prison. As soon as he got out of prison, had a brain hemorrhage. One of the lucky ones, I think. <laughs> very good. 30. Not a bad score. Gavin, do you watch EastEnders? I do watch it quite a lot, actually. Is um, that data that you analyse? Uh, not usually, no. no. <laughs> um, I was only eight when it started, so... I'm going to go for Peter Beale. Peter Beale. OK, we are looking for EastEnders characters, original EastEnders characters. You're saying Peter Beale. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many people said Peter Beale. <laughs> 21. Okay. Peter Beale scores you 21. Richard? Yeah, another very good answer. He was eventually killed off by his gangster in-laws in a motorway accident. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Sue. Hi. You watch EastEnders? I do watch EastEnders. Did you watch the original episode? I did watch the original episode, yes. Do you remember it? I remember some of it, yes. Do you remember any really obscure characters from it? I think I've, I can remember the name. I'm just hoping it's classed as the character was the body that was found. Reg Cox. Oh, Reg Cox was the body that was found. found. What fantastic trivia knowledge. <laughs> if that's right, I reckon that is a, a brilliant, brilliant answer and might go all the way down. Anyway, you are hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Reg Cox. It's correct. <laughs> brilliant answer. <laughs> of course, it's EastEnders, so one person, of course, knew Reg Cox. <laughs> but that scores you one point. Brilliant answer. Yes, brilliant answer, Sue. Well done. Uh, he, was, he was the corpse found right at the very beginning of the first episode. Excellent. Thank you very much, Richard. Sam, remember we are looking for original EastEnders characters. I don't like this one. Um, <laughs> there's a few knocking about my head. Do you watch EastEnders? I do now, but it was obviously the original one was a bit before my time. Going to go for a slightly safe-ish one and go for Simon Wick. Simon Wicks, you're saying you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many people said Simon Wicks. Oh! That's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's quite annoying. Uh, Simon Wicks, I'm afraid, is an incorrect answer and scores you the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Yeah, I'm afraid Simon Wicks, played by Nick Berry, he turned up uh, a great deal later. Every loser wins, that was his song, but it's, 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 <laughs> it's not appropriate here. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks very much, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Blimey, what a scoreboard that is. James and Sam, way up there on 100. James... Pressure on you to find a pointless answer on the next pass. Sue and Chris, what a fantastic answer. Reg Cox. <laughs> right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> James, you are the highest scorers on 100 points. You've got to try and find as low a possible score as you can. Okay. Pointless okay. if you possibly can. We are looking for original EastEnders characters. Well, now, after that, um, I'm going to go a bit riskier than what I was going to go for, and I'm going to go for Lou Beal. Lou Beal. Mm -hmm. OK. There was no red line for you, I'm afraid, because you are the high scorers. Let's see how many people said Lou Beal. It's right. <laughs> OK.
A good answer. That scores you eight points, bringing you a total of 108. Richard. Yeah, very good answer. Lou Beale, played by Anna Wing. She's the, the original EastEnders matriarch. Chris, how good is your EastEnders knowledge? Well, I have followed it from the beginning, and I still watch it now. Did, but you, did you know Reg Cox? I knew he, there was a man dead in the beginning, but I would never have got his name. His name. <laughs> so I don't want to upset the apple cart and spoil Sue's one okay. point. OK, well, I'll tell you the good news. Even if you score 100 points, you're still in the next round. Right. Well, I'll still <laughs> try, and I will go for Michelle Fowler. OK, you're saying Michelle Fowler. Let's see how many people said that. Michelle Fowler nets you 18 points, taking you to a total of 19. Richard? Yeah, Michelle Fowler, played by Susan Tully, who went on to direct episodes of EastEnders she later. She didn't. She did, yeah. They don't direct themselves, my friend. <laughs> Joe, you are currently on 21. You have to score 86 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers. Remember, we are looking for original EastEnders characters. Um, can I clarify with Richard? Are we allowed non-human characters? No, we're not. Okay. Sorry. I was going to say Rolly, but that's not my answer. If it, if it was me, you could. <laughs> <laughs> um, in that case... Uh, I just remember, I was thinking, what, so spectral? What are they? <laughs> <laughs> because you're not allowed to say the ghost of Reg Cox. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because, oh, he, does, he casts a long shadow across every script I've ever seen. Right. I'm going to have to go for Pauline Fowler. Pauline Fowler. OK, yes, that gets a, a nod from Gavin. It only has to come below that red line. We are looking for original EastEnders characters. You're saying Pauline Fowler. Let's see how many people said that. It's good enough. That's all you needed. <laughs> 34, that scores you, giving you a total of 55. Pauline Fowler. Yeah, very well done, Joe. Of course, she was married to Arthur Fowler. Another reason he was so lucky. <laughs> Thanks very much, Katie. <laughs> OK, you are currently on 30. You have to score 77 or less with your answer. I'm actually a bit of a Corrie fan, not going to lie. But I have got an answer. I've racked my brain and I'm going to go with Ian Beale. There's your red line. Let's see if Ian Beale takes you below the red line. Ian Beale. <laughs> it does! <laughs> Down he goes, 16. <laughs> Giving you a total of 46. Great news for you. Terrible news for James and Sam, I'm afraid. Richard, Ian Beale. Yeah, Ian Beale, played by Adam Woodyatt. He was in it in 1985. He's still in it now. He's been there the whole time. Uh, Adam Woodyatt's agent. It's the easiest job in show business. <laughs> <laughs> so the losing pair at the end of round one, I'm afraid, are James and Sam. Richard. What should they have said? Well, there were actually three pointless answers out there. Very well done if you've got any of these three at home. There were uh, the two shopkeepers, Neymar and Saeed Jeffrey, and Sue Osman, who uh, was married to Ali Osman from Ozcabs. No relation. Oh, uh, no relation? Oh, to each other they were, actually. They were married, <laughs> but no relation to me. All of those are very good answers. Let's take a look at the worst things you could have said. These are the things that most of our 100 people said. In third, it was... Pauline Fowler. Uh, in second, we have Angie Watts. And Xander, what do you think was top? Who's the, what's the worst answer of all? I'm going to go with the dirty man. <laughs> 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 was, it, is that, was his name Den, maybe? Was it Den Watts? Dirty Den dirty Watts, exactly. Den would have scored Watts. you yeah. 47 points. So thanks very much, Richard. At the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is, I'm sorry to say, it's James and Sam. What's going on? You went, you went out in the head-to-head -head last time. I know, I know. I read so many TV guides and just leave them around the flat and he just doesn't pick them up, so... <laughs> <laughs> They're not from, like, 1984 or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Bad luck. Uh, this was your second chance, I'm afraid, to reach the point this final, I'm afraid. So we do say properly goodbye to you this time, but your EastEnders knowledge just wasn't enough to get you through to the next round. But you've been fantastic contestants. Thanks for playing. So the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> now, obviously, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. OK, the category for round two is... Technology. 
Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? Go first. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question is... Inventors and their inventions. In this round, we're about to show you the names of some famous inventors. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us the invention with which they are most closely associated. All right, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you the names of six inventors. Some of the inventions will be quite obvious. Those will score you a lot of points. Some uh, more obscure, which will score you the fewest points. If you give me a wrong answer, that will score you 100 points. See at home if you can get all six of them. OK, thanks very much. And our first six are... Here they come. Jethro Tull, Alexandra Graham Bell, James Hargreaves, Johannes Gutenberg, Trevor Bayliss, Isaac Merritt Singer. I'll just read those one more time. Jethro Tull, Alexander Graham Bell, James Hargreaves, Johannes Gutenberg, Trevor Bayliss, Isaac Merritt Singer. OK, we're looking for the inventions most closely associated with those inventors. Katie, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, they're not I, looking happy at all. I don't know any of them. <laughs> Bad times. Um, I'm going to go with Alexander Graham Bell. I don't know what he invented. Um, radio, maybe? You're going to go with radio? Radio, yeah. OK, let's see if Alexander Graham Bell and radio is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Oh, bad luck. I'm afraid that's a wrong answer, which means you score 100 points. Richard? Uh, yeah, it is an incorrect answer. I won't tell you what the real answer is in case one of the other pairs wants to take a wild stab in the dark as to what he invented. <laughs> OK, Gambit. Um, I think there's only one I know as well. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm going to have to go for Alexander Graham Bell, <laughs> the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell, telephone. OK, well, let's see if it's right this time. And how many people said it? Alexander Graham Bell, telephone. It's correct. 84 people said that. Scores you 84. Richard? Uh, yeah, he was just 29 years old when uh, he invented the telephone, the first telephone. The real genius was the guy who invented the second telephone. He also invented mobile top-ups. <laughs> he was way ahead of his time. Chris, we are looking for the inventions most closely associated with these inventors. And look, you've got one, two, three, four, five left to choose from. Yes, I do recognise some of the names, but the one I'll go for is the bottom one. Mm -hmm. Isaac Merritt Singer and the sewing machine. Singer and the sewing machine. Let's see if that's right and how many people said it. Singer, sewing machine. Not a bad answer. 32, that scores you. Richard. Yeah, a really good answer, Chris. He fathered 24 children by five no. women. Yep, and still invented a sewing machine. <laughs> that is, uh, there's a guy who could multitask. <laughs> <laughs> and quite a lot there that haven't been... No, they haven't, so you might want to fill in some of these gaps. I imagine you can oh, uh, Lord. Yes. whiz through this list. Johannes Gutenberg invented... Printing press. Printing press, exactly right. That would have got you... 13 points. Hey. Trevor Bayliss. Radio. Wind up radio. The wind up radio. Ra exactly yes. right. Yeah, that would have got you uh, 21 points. Jethro Tull. Spinning Jenny, wasn't that? Well, no, no, oh. no, no, no. Because anybody, Jethro Tull? Seed drill is exactly right. That would have got you six Seed points. And James Hargreaves. No idea. Now he did invent the spinning Jenny. Did he really? Yeah, he did indeed. The spinning uh, Jenny. That would have got you that. seven points. Very right. well done if you got all of those at home. We're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Goodness, Liz and Katie, way out ahead there with 100. Liz, pressure on you to score as low as you can in the next pass. Gavin and Joe, not that far behind. So, yes, Joe, you're going to have to pull something very clever out of the bag. Let's hope you get a good list to choose from. 32, not a bad score for you, Chris and Sue. Sue, keep up that nice low scoring and you should be safely through to the next round. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? Fabulous. OK, we're going to put six more names of famous inventors on the board. And here they are. We have got... Percy Shaw, Wallace Hume Carruthers, Adolf Sachs, John Logie Baird, Alfred Nobel, Sarah Boone. Percy Shaw, Wallace Hume Carruthers, Adolf Sachs, John Logie Baird, Alfred Nobel, 
Sarah Boone. There they are. Remember, we're looking for the inventions most closely associated with those inventors, and you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Sue, how does that list look to you? Because Chris did so well, I think I'd better play safe. Just to remind you where you are, you're on 32. To avoid becoming the high scorers, you want to be scoring 67 or less with this answer. Right. Um, I think I'll stick with Percy Shaw, Cat's Eyes. What a great answer. Percy Shaw, Cat's Eyes. Here's your red line. Come below that red line and Percy Shaw will see you through to the next round. Let's see if it's right. And how many people said it? That's right. And good enough. Very good. That's a fantastic answer. Reg Cox and Cat's Eyes. Fantastic. What a great team. That scores you eight, giving you a total of 40. Richard? Uh, yeah, formidable team indeed. That's a great answer. Eight points. Invented in 1934, the Cat's Eyes. Got the idea when his headlights were reflected in a, in a real Cat's Eyes, supposedly. It stopped him driving off a road. Thank you very much. Sue and Chris, you are definitely through to the head-to-head. -head. Well done. Joe, you and Gavin are on 84, which means you have to score 15 or less with this answer to avoid overtaking... Liz and Katie in becoming the high scorers. Remember, we are looking for the inventions associated with these inventors. I'm going to have to go for John Logie Baird, the television. John Logie Baird, television. There's your red line. It's quite low down there. If you come below that red line, you are through to the next round, definitely. John Logie Baird. Let's see how many people said that, and let's see if it's correct. <laughs> Fifty-two. That's a high-scoring answer. Takes your score up to 136. Richard. Yeah, John Logie Baird invented television. The first public display was in 1926. And what was the first thing ever broadcast? Oh, it's Last of the Summer Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Joe and Gavin, that puts you out ahead. 136. You are currently the high scorers. Liz has to score 35 or less with this answer to save them from leaving the show? That's not going to happen. <laughs> really? How's that list looking to you? You've okay. got four options left. OK. I'd have a pretty wild guess at three of them. And this is my trailer thinking it's based on the names. <laughs> so... OK. For something along the lines of Adolfi Sax, I would want to say that he perhaps invented the saxophone, but that would be a random guess. Alfred Noble. For some reason, it screams the Nobel Peace Prize, so if he did invent something which then led to that, I don't know what it was. He could have just invented the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't know. It could just be a random thing. And Sarah Boone, no, very loose. I potentially think she might have something to do with books. So everything is pointing to Wallace Hume Carruthers. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. So basically, it's just any random guess, whichever one I'm, I'm kind of heading towards. <sighs> OK. I'm going to go with Adolfi Sax inventing the saxophone. OK. <laughs> Adolf Sax inventing the saxophone. There's your red line. If you come below that red line, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if it's correct and let's see how many people said it. Adolf Sax, saxophone. It's right. There it goes. Wow, good enough. <laughs> Wow, that scores you only 15, giving you a total of 115 and seeing you through to the next round. Richard? Yeah, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Very, very good, and that's, uh, that's tough luck on, uh, on Joe and Gavin. Let's take a look at the rest of those. What would you have said for Alfred Nobel? I, th uh, I didn't think... I think it was the Nobel Peace Prize that he, he's named after, I think, but I don't know if he invented anything. What do you think, Zander? Do you know no idea. He invented dynamite. No! Yeah, he did wow. indeed. That Seriously? would have scored you, yeah, would have scored you 25 points. Sarah Boone, any idea? No one will get this. Sarah Boone, anyone? Straighteners. Straighteners? <laughs> <laughs> That's a, you, you deserve to stay on the show for that. Uh, <laughs> she didn't, unfortunately. Well, she almost oh, she sort of did. She, she invented the ironing board. There you are. Yeah. So that would have got you one point. And Wallace Hume Carruthers. 
invented nylon. Very, very well done if you got that at home. That was a pointless answer. Would have added two hundred and fifty pounds to the jackpot. So fifteen. Sorry, I just want to just fifteen. I mean, if you want to be obscure, invent a popular instrument named after you. Yes. An Osmania, Osmanophone. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. It hasn't caught on, but I keep trying. Well, my friend Dave Vuvuzela. He had, a, <laughs> he, had a, he had a very good summer, very lucrative summer, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Richard. At the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Gavin and Joe. Dear, oh, dear. What would you have liked to have come up? Pafé, who invented the... Um, the the newsreel. The newsreel. I need the uh, Nobel one. So. You knew the Nobel yeah. one. It's just <laughs> <on> <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a shame to say goodbye to you so early on, but of course you will be back next time. Everyone gets two chances to get through to our final, so hopefully you'll be with us for longer next time. But thanks so much for playing. It's been fantastic contestants. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so well done. Sue and Chris, Liz and Kate, you've made it through to the head-to-head -head round. Now, obviously only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot which, in case you'd forgotten, currently stands at £1,000. <laughs> now, you are going head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. OK, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Olympic ball sports as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for all sports played at the 2008 Olympic Games that involve the athlete moving a ball as a core part of the sport. We're not looking for things within other sports like rhythmic gymnastics or shot put. Sue and Chris, because you've played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. We are looking for Olympic ball sports. You've got an answer. We have. One that Sue's happy with. Sue <laughs> Reg Cox is happy with. <laughs> What's it going to be? Well, we're not that up on Olympic ball sports, but I'm sure they do play hockey. Hockey. OK, you're saying hockey. Liz and Katie. That was my answer. Yeah. So let's think uh, of another one. OK, we've watched it. Let's think of that this logically. We watched it. Um... Although nothing's coming to me, it's completely obvious. Should we just bite the bullet and go with football and really know that it's going to be really hard? Shall we? We'll Can do better on the other questions, fine. You sure? Fine. You sure? Yeah. OK, yeah, we'll go, we'll it's go football. for football. football. Yeah. OK, football. hockey and football. Right, OK, well, Sue and Chris said hockey. Let's see how that did. Hockey. <laughs> 54. You happy with 54? Oh, yes. Better than 100. <laughs> Better than 100. Let's see how football does. How many people said football? <laughs> yeah. It's as you thought. After the first question, it is 1-0 to Sue and Chris. Richard. Let's take a look at some of the, the more obscure ones. Softball and handball, right down at the bottom there. Beach volleyball. Who can forget beach volleyball? There's a nation of 14-year-old boys screaming at the screen now. <laughs> Water polo with uh, 10 points there. Baseball, table tennis, of course, would have scored you 33. Basketball and volleyball, they both would have won you the points. And the top three, hockey, tennis and football, with 76. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Here is your second question. Sue and Chris ahead, 1-0. If they win this point, they are straight through to the final. Just, just to let you know. <laughs> OK, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Tina Turner top ten hits as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any solo single released by Tina Turner in the UK that reached the UK top ten prior to May 2010. Looking for any Tina Turner top ten single. OK, Liz and Katie, you have to get this one right to stay in the game. You have to win this point. We're going to go with the most obvious because we can't think of anything more obscure, so we're going to go with 
Simply the best. Simply the best. OK. Chris and Sue. Well, this what? I don't know. What you, what I, I don't know whether it was. I don't know whether they got in the top ten. The steamy windows. Have you answer? No, steamy. go for the one we know because it might be the wrong. I, I don't know if it's. Go for steamy windows. Why? I was, we're not quite sure of one. What the, the the full title is. So we'll go steamy windows, but we don't know whether it was in the top ten. Okay, you're going to say steamy windows. OK, Liz and Katie have gone with simply the best. Let's see if that's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Well, it's right. 45. <laughs> and Sue and Chris have gone with steamy windows. Let's see if that's correct, and how many people said that, if it is. Bad luck. That is an incorrect answer. Richard? No, absolutely right. It reached number 13 in mm. 1990, I'm afraid. Uh, if you had said private I've... dancer, yeah. that would also have been 100, because that reached number 26. Oh, so, I... one all. <laughs> Game on. There were quite a few answers that would have won this. There's quite a few obscure Tina Turner top tens. When the heartache is over was a pointless answer. Very well done if you got that at home. Not if you've got that at home. <laughs> but I suspect if you've got it, you have got it. The next three sounds like a conversation she's having with someone. I don't want to fight. Let's stay together. I don't want to lose you. They, they all scored one point. Let's look at the next page. Goldeneye. But there we go. There's another a couple of big answers there. We don't need another hero. Would have scored you 10 points. Would have won you the point. What's love got to do with it? 16 points. And the best, or better known as simply the best, but that's its official title, uh, 45 points. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Everything to play for. Third question. One all as it stands. Whoever gets this point is through to the final. Here's your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many longest-serving prime ministers as they could. Longest-serving prime ministers, Richard. Yep, looking for any British prime minister who has served for 10 years or more. That can be in one go or spread out, but any British prime minister who's served for 10 years or more. OK, thank you very much. Sue and Chris, you get to go first again. Well, I don't think we can go past the Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher. OK, you're going to say Margaret Thatcher. Liz and Katie... How long did Tony Blair... How long was he in charge for? Because he came in in 97, didn't he? Churchill. How long did Churchill do? He did more than 10 years, I'm but sure. Would that be more obvious than Margaret, Margaret Thatcher? Thatcher? I think, I think we're going to have to go between Tony Blair or Winston Churchill. So, what do we think is going to be more obscure? We'll go with... <laughs> Let's go with Winston Churchill. Really? Really. OK. We're going okay. to go... <laughs> on your head, okay. <laughs> Winston Churchill, on your head, Liz, be it. Okay. Katie has spoken. OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, so we have Margaret Thatcher and Winston Churchill, two little-known prime ministers. <laughs> Sue and Chris, Margaret Thatcher, you went first, so let's put that to the test first. Let's see how many people said Margaret Thatcher. Oh. Oh, 87. Mm. Liz and Katie have said Winston Churchill. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Winston Churchill. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Winston Churchill. That point goes to Sue and Chris. They are now through to the final. Richard. Yeah, that's tough luck. Winston Churchill was only Prime Minister for eight years. If you'd said Tony Blair, you'd be through to the final because he scored oh. 68 points. He was uh, Prime Minister for 10 years. There are a number of other answers here, some obscure ones. Well done if you've got any of these. Let's take a look. The Marquess of Salisbury, Henry Pelham, Earl of Liverpool. All of those are pointless answers. Lord North, Sir Robert Walpole, who is the, uh, the longest-serving Prime Minister of all, I think 21 years. Some more familiar names coming up. Pitt the Younger would have scored you six points. Gladstone, seven points. And uh, the big answers there, Tony Blair, 68. And Margaret Thatcher, 87, the most obvious answer of all, but it's just got you through to the final. <laughs> so the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, it's Liz and Katie. Who'd have thought Winston Churchill wasn't that, wasn't, uh, think, was under yeah, 10, years. 10 years? Yeah. Did you know any of the other more obscure names? Not got a clue. I hadn't heard any of them, would you? No, not really. No. Yeah. No. Walpole. God, if you didn't like him. 
21 years. Yeah, that's tough, isn't it? Oh, imagine if you hated him from the day from day one. <laughs> Listen, Katie, well done for getting on this far, but sadly, I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you now. You've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for Sue and Chris, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win £1,000. <laughs> so, congratulations, Sue and Chris. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. It's what you came down from County Durham for. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, which at the end of today's show stands at £1,000. <laughs> well, the rules are very simple. All you need to win the money is to find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. Now, we haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You just have to find one to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. And you can go for motorsport, India, or the Oscars? Motorsports, India, or the Oscars? Sue, looking troubled by that. Chris, yeah. looking intrigued. <laughs> Very intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> if it went motorsport and it went back a little while, we might get some. India, I haven't got a clue. No, Geography is no, not good. Hopeless. And Oscars, it's a very wide field. What would you like to pick? Oh, anything. You, t you pick. I think we're going to have to go for the Oscars, do you think? Yeah. Because it's film and we might stand a chance. There might be one there that we know. Yep. Yeah. You're going to go with the Oscars? The Oscars. Oscars. Yeah. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many people who have hosted the Oscars as they could. People who've hosted the Oscars. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any person who has hosted or co-hosted the Oscars, the Academy Awards ceremony, from the very first one in 1929 through to 2010. There are a lot of names on the list and there are a lot of pointless answers there as well. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to do to win that £1,000 is to find an answer that is pointless. Just one of those answers needs to be pointless. Your 60 seconds starts now. Well, I wish it had been films. I don't know, hosts. Yes, but would there be actors that hosted it? Or are there, like, presenters that hosted it? We could go for somebody like Jack Nicholson. He might have done it, cos I think he could host something. But, um, what was that famous host on television who did a, um, a, a chat show? Letterman. Yes. What's his first name? John Letterman, is it? Somebody yeah, we'll like go that. for those two. Now we need a third one. Um, would somebody like... Female? Um, yeah. Any famous female Would ones? Would it have been Taylor? Done it? I yeah, know. we'll go for I those, eh? I, I haven't a clue, really. Or for Winfrey? Would she, she host something? I don't know. She could have done. Yeah. I can't go I back any further. No, no. I don't think... I don't OK, think. that's your minute up. I'd won this. It's yep. a tough one. It's a really tough one. It is tough. So, three answers. If you give me three answers, we'll put them up on the board and see. You never know. Yeah. You might just land on a pointless one. Jack Nicholson? Jack Nicholson. Yeah. We'll go for Oprah Winfrey. She seems to have done Oprah a lot. Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. And... Oh, oh, somebody like Joan Rivers. Yeah. We'll go Joan, Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. Which of those do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Joan no, Rivers. Rivers. <laughs> no. We'll go Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers. We'll put yeah. her up third. first. Yeah. Oprah. And we'll go for Jack Nicholson. So Jack Nicholson first. Yes. We'll put him first. OK, Jack Nicholson, Oprah Winfrey, Joan Rivers. So let's put those up on the board in that order. Jack Nicholson, Oprah Winfrey, and Joan Rivers. There they are. They look quite good on the board now, don't they? <laughs> they look very good. Very good. Just one of those needs to be a pointless answer for you to win that £1,000. OK, we were looking for people who have hosted the Oscars. This is your least confident answer. You only need one of these to be pointless and you will win that £1,000 jackpot. Let's see how many people said your first answer. Jack Nicholson. Next year. Next year. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> Bad luck. I'm afraid Jack Nicholson is incorrect, so it's not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. That was a real punt. You just said he might have done it. You said he'd be quite good. Yes, he would. We need to learn the difference between casting sessions and, and quiz shows here. But, uh, <laughs> yes, you're right. 
you're watching any of the uh, American Academy, Jack Nicholson, quite a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Hasn't done it yet. We are looking for people who have hosted the Oscars. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, which is Oprah Winfrey. Likely, I'd have thought. Likely. I could see her doing it. <laughs> I could see her doing it. Let's see how many people said Oprah Winfrey for £1,000. Well, oh, isn't that a surprise? Bad luck. Yeah. But I think that was a better kind of incorrect than, than Jack Nicholson. <laughs> well, we're getting Do you know what I mean? I think <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting closer to the target here. Sadly, though, it was incorrect. Not a pointless answer. You only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. We are looking, in case you'd forgotten, for people who have hosted the Oscars. You said this was the answer you were most confident in. Joan Rivers. See, I can see her doing it. Definitely. Sure, she's done it. Joan Rivers. This has to be pointless. Has to be correct. Yeah. Has to be correct. That's the first <laughs> mountain to climb. If it's correct, I reckon we're going all the way down. But um, sadly, that's just me, not yeah. the 100 people we asked. Or indeed, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if she's a correct answer. And if she is, let's see if she's pointless. Joan Rivers. <laughs> Unfortunately, Joan Rivers, also an incorrect answer. You didn't manage to find that crucial pointless answer, so I'm afraid yeah. you don't win today's jackpot of £1,000, which rolls over to the next show. But you have been fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy, after all. Thank you. So, Richard, some, some answers, some correct answers and some pointless answers. Uh, yeah, I thought they were all good guesses. Joan Rivers, of course, does a lot of red carpet stuff outside the Oscars, so she's always there, but she's never actually hosted it. Let's take a look at some of the more well-known pointless answers. Uh, Frank Capra hosted it in the same year that, that uh, he won Best Picture. Dudley Moore hosted it. Gene Kelly would have been a pointless answer, as would Fred Astaire. Paul Hogan hosted it. That must have been a long night. Uh, <laughs> Sammy Davis Jr. also hosted it. He was a pointless answer. And Laurence Olivier, Diana Ross, Donald Duck. Donald Donald Duck. Duck. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe you didn't say Donald Duck. Well, we'll, 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 we'll never forget that one, mind, will we, Donald Duck? <laughs> Remember that. So very well done if you've got any of those at home. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, uh, Sue and Chris. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you both for playing. Fantastic contestants. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. See you. But nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we'll be playing for £2,000. There it is. <laughs> Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.